Today we're going to start having a look at a project for townhouses or terrace houses and we're using the new New South Wales Government State Environment Planning Policy CDC for low rise medium density housing. So we're going to use a site. I'm going to import this AutoCAD drawing. Now uh, this is based on a survey, uh, it's a, just a fictitious project for education purposes. Uh, we see that it's not quite right, we'll, we'll just check all these dimensions to make sure it is correct. So how do we do that? We're going to resize it, edit, reshape, resize. We're going to define graphically. We're going to choose one of these numbers. So this one here, 63.7, click, click, uh, 63700 in millimeters. It's always a bit concerning when you're just out, it makes, makes, always makes me wonder if there's something correct or incorrect about what I'm doing. We'll take a few measurements on each of the boundaries just to see if they're working or not. That one looks pretty good as well. Let's have a look at this one. I don't know where that point is. Obviously it's there's a change in angle somewhere. So again it's a bit of a yeah it's not going to be exactly right but it's going to be close enough for now. Uh, we've also created a an overlay. Um, this is the scale is very different so we're going to have to explode this one. Edit reshape explode I don't really want to keep the originals I want to make sure it's grouped together I'm going to rotate it because this is rotated 90 degrees and I've got a similar size to be able to use for this one so we see that this dimension is 36 edit reshape uh, before I do that I have to temporarily suspend this group edit reshape resize same process to find graphically Click, X hold shift. It's a bit worrying with the angle. Click, 36000. Great. And now this should be able to line up with the other one, so I need to find that point where it lines up. Let's use this one here. Stick that over this one here. They line up pretty well. So here we've got our site. What I'm really getting from this bottom one uh, is the contour lines. So I'm going to replace them pretty soon anyway. Going up to, let's go up to our uh, terrain level. Right click, show us trace reference so we can see what's happening underneath. I'm going to get a polyline. I'm going to use the double dash and I'm going to trace this now just checking it it should end up being 36 it's not been drawn perfectly but it's pretty close so I want 36 by 30 so I'm just going to redraw it just to make sure it is perfect and I want that angle to be zero so again if we're basing on something that's not perfect we're always going to end up with imperfect situations a hey, zero D 36000, enter, and we want this to be 30. Great, and I'm going to then use under more, spline line, to be able to draw in these contour lines. Now I'm going to make it a bit bigger. Sorry, my hesitation for a second. I was just thinking about what I'm trying to do. Um, I'm going to draw these lines in a bigger area than the area that I'm actually going to uh, define as the site. Why am I making them bigger? Just because I want to be able to have context. So we can do shadow diagrams and, and the like. So I'm just going to make these substantially broader. I'm not worrying about being completely accurate, but when I get onto the site, I definitely want to be more accurate. 
problem is I'm just snapping onto other things so it helps to get a bit closer. One more. Let's just fix that one up. I can always just grab the edge and remove it if need be. And based on what I've just created, I'm now going to go to design, grab my mesh tool, and just make my mesh tool big enough that it's extending past the edge of the side in a few different directions. Just so as well, if I was to shadow cast. Uh, hopefully the shadow would be falling somewhere on this site still. Now because this is downhill I could extend that one a bit if I wanted to. And then if I was going to do that I'd probably want to just add in that last contour. So it's a bit of an awkward one because I'm going in and out of the site. Great. Turn that trace reference off. Before I really do that, I need to know what are the contours. I'll go back to the AHD just so hopefully it's a bit clearer to see. And I will take the this one off and I'll cut this and I'll place it up on another story, my reference story for now. So I can see these contours a bit more clearly. So we have see 64, 63 and a half, 63. That's the numbers I was just trying to find. It's a good habit to replicate some of these numbers just for reference later. So we'll just grab a piece of text. Let's make this bigger. I'm also change the scale of that. That's not going to make any difference because I've got this on paper scale. And I will go wrap text just to make the box smaller. So 64. Now if I wanted to do this like the um, the survey drawing, I could put a frame or an opaque background and I can make the background white. And the advantage of that is it will cut through, just like we see there. That's not literally cutting the um, polyline, sorry, the spline, uh, but it is making sure that I can read the text. Don't need this one. I'll keep it there as a reference, but then... 63.5, there, come here. Hmm, I'm getting tired. 60.5. Now we'll just check that, see if we can find another reference somewhere along here. There are none, so we're just going to have to hope that these are consistent. Alright, so we've got our terrain mesh, which is flat at the moment. We've got some contour lines made of splines that we're going to use to define We've got our boundary outline, which we can see is considerably smaller than the mesh, but that's great. So it's going to help us just to have a bit of context in terms of sight. We have to make sure that each of these polyline splines are extending through the terrain mesh. In that case, in this case, there's no issue. So now I can turn off my trace references so I don't get confused. Select my mesh. Select my mesh tool, 
magic wand on the splines, and fit to user ridges. Now we're defining each of the ridges based on the numbers that we see here. 64 representing straight on height datum, 64 meters above sea level. 64000, we always need to do that in millimeters and apply to all. So it's applying to all of the surfaces along the run, along the contour. 63500, 63000. Great, so we've done all the contour lines. What we'll see is the only thing left to do if we uh, need to do this one as well. Now, because it goes out and comes back in, I need to define both sides. When I select this mesh, have a look at it in 3D, we're going to see that the, the edges, the corners, still are touching the ground, so we need to extend those up. We can extend those up in 3D, or we can um, use a number, put a number to input those. We'll go back to the terrain. Now we can estimate those if we don't have a, an actual number for that. And because I made my mesh much bigger than my site, it really doesn't matter if I'm not exactly correct. 63800. Zero, zero. I don't want to apply it all in this instance because I am not wanting to do all four corners. I'm only wanting to do a little bit. So this would be 642. Sorry. Sixty four, and we'll call this one sixty two, six zero two. Great, let's have a look at that again. Wonderful. So we've got a mesh, and those corners look pretty, pretty accurate. Again, doesn't matter too much because it's right in the middle. Uh, one thing that I have been doing lately in terms of now defining this area, particularly if I'm making my mesh bigger is to uh, use something to define the boundary. Um, we could do that with a slab. We could do those with um, roofs to make like a fence around the border. Anything that's going to help us to define those edges can be, help can be helpful. And the purpose is that we're making this in order to be able to create our boundary, our site, and a site section, so we're going to cut a section through here as well. So we can use this to establish a site analysis plan and site analysis section, or a site analysis, a study. And so over the next few weeks, that's what we're going to be doing for this project. Uh, and we'll hopefully at the same time be learning a bit more about the new regulations in the low-rise, medium-density design guideline.